In our last video, how to calculate the ROAS of a subscription app CUA from iTunes data, we went over how to calculate this ROAS for just new users while excluding returning users for a subscription app. However, if you just look at new user LTV and ROAS, you're only accounting for revenue you make in the first transaction in month one from the user. And while you're intentionally excluding renewals, what's true is that these renewals do contribute to the return on ad spend. So you do want to account for them, but in a cohorted manner, right? So for instance, if you spend a dollar on ads, you make 50 cents back in month one and $5 in six months from the subscriber, you're wildly profitable. But this is not going to reflect in your ROAS calculation if you're only accounting for month one's revenue and ROAS. Your month one ROAS is 50%, your six month ROAS is 500%. So there is, an, there is a case for accounting for the downstream LTV and ROAS of a subscription app, not just the month one LTV and ROAS. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through how to calculate downstream LTV and ROAS for a subscription app based on iTunes data alone. And this is also just because iTunes is as close as you can get to being an absolute source of truth uh, and as close as you can get to what you've actually got to make, right? Uh, and also it's the simplest tool to get started with uh, if you are an app developer. Great, now we are on iTunes and uh, we are under trends, uh, subscriptions, retention. Scroll down and you will see retention trends for standard paid subscriptions. These are these reflect the percentage of subscribers who stay active after X number of renewal periods, right? So for a monthly plan, this could be per month, for an, year, for an annual plan, this could be per year. Now, uh, you'll notice that again, uh, you know, it's important to break out annual and monthly plans here. So for instance, this is for the monthly plan and I have segmented this. If you take the average, you, it's not very meaningful. So I will take duration equals one year, right? So here you go. And you can see the retention after one year is much lower here, right? Than the retention was for after the single month. Uh, what's also important to note is that this is a rolling three-year average. It is not going to account for seasonality, product changes, monetization changes, user acquisition mix changes. So this is a broad-based average. So this is a good starting point. You can certainly make a much more granular model as you go forward. But uh, my goal here is for you to illustrate how to think about this at a conceptual level before you get more fancy with your models. Right, so here's how you get monthly and annual retention numbers. What do you do with this, right? And what's, what's important here is that these are cohorted retention numbers, which again, you're not seeing in the revenue numbers because the revenue numbers show your revenue from, let's just say you look at the sales of proceeds today, that could have come from somebody that installed a month ago, two months ago, three months ago, everything's combined. And this is much more cohorted and this is a much clearer view uh, and you'll also notice this is much this view is something that apple does not provide for uh you know free-to-play apps or non-subscription apps so this can be incredibly valuable and uh, let's transition over to our spreadsheet right so on the right you see the same retention uh, profile that we had right month one to month 12 uh and of course, over here, you see the annual plan. What's interesting to note is you calculate the amount of revenue you're making in 12 months. That's more than four times what you've made in the first transaction for your monthly plan. And here, the amount of revenue you're making in two years is 1.4 times what you made in the first transaction, right? And obviously, because your yearly price point is much higher, this could actually be much more profitable. Your annual plan could actually be much more profitable than your monthly plan, right? So your monthly plan, if it's in the 10 to $15 range, and this is in the 60 to $70 range, you're probably making more money in the annual plan here, right? And even though the 4.1 looks impressive, 
you also realize you need that to be profitable on your user acquisition, right? If your price point for the monthly plan is in a 10 to $15 range, you, you know, if it's in a 10 to $15 range, you really need to recover money downstream, right? And also if a user subscribes for month one and just unsubscribes right afterwards, your product probably isn't very healthy. You know, it really shouldn't be a subscription or it should just be a one-off transaction, right? Uh, so that's how you're getting how much revenue. So in this case, you're making four times the revenue that you made after month one. In this case, you're getting 1.4 times the revenue you're making after month one. Let's look at what's happening on the left, right? So you here, I've taken the new users monthly and yearly. Uh, I've taken this from uh, um, the uh, another iTunes dashboard. Uh, this is the conversion to standard price metric. Uh, if you need, if you want to check out how we get this, check out the other video we made. Uh, it's called I believe how to calculate. ROAS from uh, iTunes dashboards. Uh, you, you can search on YouTube, you should be able to find it, right? But here's, here's why this is important. I'm not gonna get into how you come up with that, uh, but here's why this is important. Once you have these metrics, you know, what percentage of users are monthly, how, what percentage are annual, you can calculate your ratio of year one to month one LTV. That's, that's weighted average for new users and for new users monthly and yearly. So you take a uh, number of new users monthly multiplied by the ratio here, 4.1, new users annual multiplied by the ratio for mm, annual plans divided by the total number of users. What this tells you is you're making 60% more money than 60% uh, more money after the first transaction uh, that as compared to just the first transaction. Why is that important? If your net proceeds after month one are 389, your proceeds after year one are way, way higher. It's 123, and that's like a day and night difference. And that's like a 200K difference. You can see the day and night difference in the ROAS here as well. It's like, you know, at 126, it's a good app, it's investable. At 201, it's wildly investable. Right. And, uh, you know, between 126 and 201, you're probably leaving a lot of money on the table. It's not for me to tell you how much to invest. It is for me to tell you to account for the difference between your upfront month one monetization and your downstream year one monetization. Right. And uh, uh, yeah, I hope this gives you food for thought and helping you think about and also understand how exactly to calculate your downstream LTVs and downstream ROAS numbers. I hope this was helpful. If this resonated, uh, please leave a comment, leave a hit like, hit subscribe in the YouTube uh, channel. Thank you.